Garmagut Khan Korla, and first on behalf of Labour, just to extend a welcome to the British Ambassador here, and also to extend our condolences to the British people and to all those on this island impacted by the sad loss of your Head of State. And I think also to note the very positive contribution that your Queen made uh, to relations between Britain and Ireland on her visit here, not just to Cork, but also to Dublin in, and other parts of the country in 2011. Uh, and I think we all remember that visit with great affection and with great, uh, uh, and, and just to pay tribute again to the, the, that contribution that that visit alone, that state visit alone made to improving relations between our islands. Uh, Taoiseach, uh, as the Dáil and Shannad resume today, we face into a bleak winter with dark clouds gathering on the horizon. I think all of us are very conscious of that. As we see energy bills increasing dramatically for so many struggling households and families, households facing the dreadful prospect of, of energy bills which could reach €6,000 per annum next year, and biz small businesses which are telling us that now their energy bills are as much as their rent, that it's like paying a second rent for so many small and medium enterprises. And so people and small business owners are really scared. They're facing into this very, very frightening period ahead, and they want to see some certainty, some security, and some reassurance from this government, and also a sense of urgency. And Taoiseach, there's one way in which we, th we believe the government can and should act with greater urgency. We want to see a really clear signal that the exorbitant profits being made by energy companies will be targeted and that we are not going to see those take precedence over the real prospect of energy poverty for so many households, uh, families and businesses. We know that many of our EU partners have already taken action on energy bills. We know that in the budget to be published in the coming weeks, it will mean the difference for so many families between being able to get by or having to choose between heating and eating as they see bills for f food as well as fuel skyrocketing. And we know there are jobs also at risk here. So Tisha, can your government act swiftly on this to introduce a range of measures, but in particular windfall tax, to target profits and to fund the other measures that will be needed to alleviate hardship for families? In January of this year, we in Labour first called for a tax on the profits of energy companies. The best time for government to have introduced that measure would have been then, but clearly now it's still extremely important that it be done. The British government indeed did it in July, the Italian government has done something similar and we're seeing moves at EU level. So we need that immediate introduction of a windfall tax alongside an immediate maximum price cap on energy bills and alongside the third prong that we've called for, it, the extension of eligibility for the fuel allowance to more households, to low and middle income households. We have costings, we know it would cost 15 million euro for example to raise the threshold to 250 euro per week that would bring quite a number of households under back into the uh, eligibility criteria and alleviate significant hardship we and we do and we need to bring in these measures in order to ensure that the excessive profits of energy companies are being harnessed by this state please well, well, I agree with the deputy in terms of your analysis uh, it, is it is going to be a difficult winter but it's our responsibility to do everything we possibly can to reduce the pressures on households in respect of energy costs uh, and also to protect jobs uh, in, in, in society. Uh, and I appreciate the fact that you're um, clear about the need to work through the European framework in terms of carbon uh, tax or a mechanism to take the windfall gains made by energy companies, particularly non-gas generation in, in particular, who are getting inc a revenue that they would never have dreamt of because of this crisis. And it's not, as the President of the Commission said this morning, it's not fair that companies would make exorbitant profits on the back of a war and on the back of the people in, in, in terms of the, the exploitation of a crisis. And that is why we are supportive of European Union measures uh, to, um, to, to intervene so that those windfall uh, revenues would accrue to the state and to member states. Um, and the precise mechanism is still being worked out at European Union level. Um, and there was a meeting last week of the EU Council of Energy Ministers. Minister Ryan was there. The Commission is due to publish a proposal this week to include measures aimed at addressing windfall gains by non-gas generation in the electricity sector and in fossil fuel um, extraction or production. And these proposals will raise additional revenues uh, which will be used to reduce the cost of energy for society. And they may not come immediately, but there will be an important stream of revenue um, in terms of the duration of this crisis. Um, we have a surplus to the end of the year. Uh, we will use that 
as, uh, you know, as effect, effectively and efficiently as we can to alleviate pressures on people. But we do need a more ongoing revenue stream as well uh, to deal with perhaps a prolongation of this crisis, which we do not want to see. Um, and the European Union is keen to try and do everything it can to stabilise the market, reform the market, but that will take a bit longer. But I don't disagree with you at all in terms of the need to uh, make sure that those exorbitant um, revenues uh, are, are dealt with in terms of, 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 of the type of extraordinary increases that people have, or companies have benefited um, from. Uh, like, like the Sinn Féin leader criticised the government for wanting to go through the EU framework on this matter. Like we're, we believe we are members of the European Union, we should work through the European Union uh, in, in matters of this kind. Uh, Sinn Féin may have a different view to how to, to be members of the European Union, that's their prerogative. But I, I take your point. Uh, I think it would, it, 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 this is complex stuff as well. You mentioned the UK. The UK had a 95% offset for investment. So how real was that tax? Uh, I think the European Union is focusing on that excess revenue uh, that's been generated, um, which is not justifiable in terms of, of, of maintaining it. Uh, so we're supportive of that. Uh, and then more broadly, we think we need to, as I said earlier, uh, we need to help people as best we can across the different areas from education to childcare um, to, to, to obviously the cost of energy. And well, thank you, Taoiseach, and clearly it is important and we very much welcome the moves made at EU level on a windfall tax, but there are things the government could do here too and that should be done. Let's look at it this way. We have significant levels of gas consumption coming from our own Corrib gas field here in this island, and we know that Vermilion's revenues last year increased by 267%. The cost of production for that gas has not increased, but the price of gas it supplies is now costing multiples of what it did a year ago. So Taoiseach, will you examine the idea of national nationalising CARB, of bringing it under state ownership, even on a temporary break basis, to ensure a way of bringing greater certainty to families, households and businesses struggling with fuel bills. The state has the power to do so under legislation introduced indeed by Fianna Fáil, under the Fuels Control of Supplies Acts 1971 and 1982, powers invoked during the oil shortages which followed the Middle East conflict of the 1970s. We know these powers exist, we've used them before, and we do believe that in parallel with the very welcome measures at EU level, we we do need to see this government doing more here in Ireland to ensure that excessive profits are targeted, are harnessed from the energy companies to alleviate the real hardship faced by so many struggling individuals, families, businesses as they see their energy bills skyrocketing. Thank you, Deputy Patrick Taoiseach. I don't, envisage, don't advocate the nationalisation of the carb field. Um, and secondly, uh, the European Union measure does deal with carb and the carbs of this world in terms of fossil fuel extraction or production, but it's better that it's the mechanism. First of all, before any domestic measures are taken, it, would make, it makes absolute sense that we have clarity and the decision from the European uh, Union in terms of the, the, the operation of the gas market and the mechanisms that they would deploy. And that's important also for fossil fuel um, uh, extraction as well. Um, and, and so, so um, and, and we're focusing on the immediate as much as we possibly can this year uh, and the early part of next year and, be, and, and the entirety of 2023. Um, and there are wider issues around CARB and the future, by the way, um, which that company has plans for in terms of what happens after fossil fuel extraction and all of the, um, all of the plant that's there, um, which could be used for renewable uh, energy into the future or variations of that. So, uh, you know, we, we, we want to make sure that any measures we take now um, are sustainable uh, in, the, in the medium and longer term as well. Deputy uh, Richard.